Hello. Hi, it's Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Welcome. I didn't see your name, so I couldn't tell. Well, I have to be on my phone because I have to drive somewhere in a bit, so I wanted to be able to take the phone with me and uh -huh. continue to participate even if I wasn't in one spot. So Okay. Okay. Hi, Denise. Hello. All right. How are you today? You look beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm doing pretty good today. Good, good, good. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate the compliment. Yeah, you look fancy with those <laughs> pearls. <laughs> I got <guess laughs> some up a little bit. <laughs> oh, boy. So the link worked from last week or did you register for today? I tried to register and it told me there were no registrations available. It wouldn't let me register. So I just used the link from last week. So you went to the website? I went to the, I clicked on the link that you sent that said order tickets and it said tickets weren't available. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to, um, let's see. I, um, so I'll, I'll tell you what, how I did my workaround. I, I skip, I, uh, RSVP for next week and it sent me the link for next week and then I used that link. Okay. I'm, so I'm gonna go I'm gonna go to your Facebook page and I'm gonna post the link. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on because it's the same link for every week, and that's what I put in the RSVP when people register. True, but it wouldn't let me register. Yeah. I don't, right I don't wouldn't get let me that. register. I don't understand what but, yeah. let me, let me it, it did let me register an hour and a half ago. So yeah, I tried uh, just 20 minutes ago. I got off a call at 1130 and I tried at 1135. Yeah. Okay. Well, put it, yeah. Put I'm going to just go post this link on, um, on the Facebook site. You're always thinking, Denise, always thinking. Well, I was always trying to do a workaround. I think we women are pretty good at workarounds because we've always had to be. <laughs> I would agree with that. Hi, Marsha. <laughs> Marsha, can you hear me? Yes, now oh. I can. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't respond, so I wasn't sure if you could hear me or not. No, I couldn't hear you at first. <laughs> <clears throat> Did you have any trouble with the link, Marsha? No. Hmm. Did you use it, the link from last week, or how did you? No, I think it was the one that you sent this week. Okay. Went down to the join, join, um, I don't know what happened. Join video, I think it said. So I just clicked on that. And uh, at first I clicked the, the thing that was up at the top or closer up, but uh -huh. it, it didn't do anything. It just, <clears throat> it didn't do anything. So I went down to see the join. So did you, this is your second week that you've done this? This is the second week. And so we're just working, we're learning. We're learning about Zoom and and um, registration links and all kinds of technical things. <laughs> well, I love it when it's just set up and all I gotta do is click. <laughs> <laughs> I, that I can handle. <laughs> yeah, 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 I tell you. Well, I am gonna uh, use this chat box and see if we can all <laughs> see each other. And I uh, certainly want to welcome you for, to uh, Well Woman Wednesday. And we're going to get started in just a bit. So glad that you're here. And uh, say hello and tell us your name uh, in the chat box to let us know who's here so we can um, acknowledge you and welcome you. I see Laura. Hi, Laura. Hey, Dorothea. <laughs> How you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. Good. I'm doing pretty good. Good. Yeah. So we had um, 
about 15 people register. And so just want to see who's here. So in the chat box, say hello and tell us your name. If you're just joining us for Well Women Wednesday. Uh, would be uh, so glad. We are so glad that you're here. We're going to get started in about a minute. It's 12 o'clock straight up right now. And uh, but we want to give people a chance to um, log on and and chime in. So in the meantime, uh, if you're just joining us, tell us uh, in the chat box your name and uh, that you're here. And I'm glad that you're here. You are here for such a time as this. Yeah. Hi, Denise. I'm back. Oh, all right, you're back. Thank you for posting that on Facebook. You're welcome. Appreciate that. Hi, Janice. And this is Lisa. And since I'm on audio only on my phone, I don't have a chat box. So if okay. you could say, Lisa's here. Hi. <laughs> So I'm going to put Lisa Bodenhausen is well, here. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just tapped you in. <laughs> Thank you so much. It takes a village to take it care of me for sure. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Me too. Me too. Yeah, so Janice, are you going to be doing your moderator duties today or should I... Would you like to participate in that way, or would you like to just kind of? Whatever you need me to do. I wasn't sure. So yeah, just that'd be great. Me too. That would be great because okay. we had a lot of comments on the chat box last week that we didn't get a chance to get to. And my hope is that we uh, can continue that conversation with everybody. So. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, I, had, I had trouble trying to get to the, um, the link. When the thing you sent out earlier today, uh huh, it's the registration, but it says it's full. And I, I, I cannot explain that because we had a couple people who were able to register. They're here, uh, and then I, Denise mentioned that she had the same problem. So I, I really, it's the same link for all Wednesdays, and I, I was very careful to copy and paste it. Um, so I really, I don't know what to say. It does help that it's the same link. So I think some will be back. They'll, they'll do what I did is they'll try to figure it out. Um, but Janice, I also posted it on the Gateway of Hope Facebook page, the link. Okay. So yeah. hopefully some might go that that's where I went. I couldn't find the links because I had what you had. Janice's uh -huh. registration was full. So I went to the, the Facebook page and hopefully others will try that too. Okay. All right. Let's hopefully, yeah. um, hopefully everybody else can do it because it, again, the one that just went out a few minutes ago or this morning sometime, it shows full when you click on that because it goes to the website. Yeah, so I'm yeah, to... I'm not sure why, why it does that. I'm not sure why it does that. So, well, for the, the ones who are here, welcome. I'm so glad. Oh, I'm sorry, Janice. See, I just... No, go ahead. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Um, I see Tina. Hi, Tina. And I see others who just joined us. So put your name in the chat box. If you're, if you're wanting to say hello to everyone, put your name in the chat box and um, let us know that you're here. And we're going to go ahead and get started. So uh, we've got nine folks. We had about uh, 11 or 12 people registered for today's workshop. And uh, I apologize if you had any uh, technical difficulties with the link. Um, we will try to get those worked out, but we will keep moving forward today. So my name is Dacia Moore. I am Executive Director of Gateway of Hope and a licensed professional counselor. And I'm very honored to be bringing to you the Well Women Wednesday. So I am sharing my screen now with the uh, PowerPoint that we have available uh, that was created just for you. All right, so Well Women Wednesday at, uh, at Gateway of Hope. And this is a uh, series that we're going to be doing probably until the end of May, just to see how it works. And um, for the next four weeks, we are talking about living with courage. So 
courage is an important um, virtue attribute. Um, and I think that uh, it bears some discussion on what is courage? Uh, why do we need to live with courage? And, um, you know, it's in the face of fear, but still we want to we wanna have courage for the things where we need to move ahead. But first, let me share with you Gateway of Hope. Gateway of Hope is sponsoring this series. It is a free series. We're beta testing the series just to see how many people uh, like it. Uh, but for those of you who may not know about Gateway of Hope, we are a nonprofit women's counseling and life coaching center located in the Midwest. We're in the greater Kansas City area. <clears throat> and our mission is to lead women to discover hope, pursue healing, and live in wholeness through counseling, coaching, and support groups. So be sure to check out our website or give us a call. We are doing teletherapy right now and we can help. This is a great time of anxiety, or this is a time of great anxiety. Um, the the stay-at-home orders have been extended, and so we want to help women to navigate this time and any difficult time that you might have in your life, and so we are here for you. Be sure to follow us on social media, LinkedIn, um, Pinterest, uh, Instagram, all of those uh, all of those uh, platforms, Facebook, um, Twitter, we are on those platforms and we want to help you. So I, my PowerPoint is moving ahead and it says, let's get going. So let's talk about living with courage. And this is a question that I just want you to think about. Uh, you can put it in the chat box if you like, but to you, what is courage? What does it mean to be courageous and why is that important okay what is courage um, what does being courageous mean to you and why is that important so just take a minute and think about that i don't think we think about courage very much uh, i happen to be in a space where um, that is on my mind and uh, I think at Gateway of Hope, one of our missions and ministries is to help women be more courageous. I believe that. And I think that is one of our purposes. So um, we're going to talk about what is courage according to the dictionary definition. Uh, this is a faith-based Christian organization. We serve women from any faith or no faith. Uh, but I am a woman of Christian faith, and so that will come out in my talk. Uh, but certainly take what you need and leave the rest. This is by no means a way to um, sway you in one way or another, but I do want to at least inform you, for those of you who might be new to this series, um, who we are and who I am. All right. So Janice, do we have any comments about what is courage and what does courageous mean? Oh, you're muted. We're talking about stepping out on faith and trusting God, no matter what the circumstances. That's the comment right now. But I am encouraging everybody right now to um, tag somebody, um, go back and tag somebody and put this code in. I am going to put the code in so that you can invite somebody uh, to join us. Uh, Absolutely, yeah. And in case, I didn't say it at the beginning, I apologize, but this is being recorded so that you can take a look at it later on down the road if it is inspirational to you, but just so that you know this is being recorded. All right. All right, so in the work that I've done, I've been working on this idea of becoming a fearless woman for many years. And um, one of the first things I did is to look up the definition of courage according to the, um, the dictionary definition. <clears throat> and the definition according to Webster is to move forward one step at a time in the face of adversity and in spite of how you feel. To move forward one step at a time in the face of adversity and in spite of how you feel. So we're gonna take a look at this definition and really pull it apart. 
and really, you know, look at it from all angles. And one of the things, one of the ways that we do that is to think of the stories that we often hear about people who are courageous. Um, think of any major movie blockbuster with superheroes in it. And there is always a scene where the superhero comes against the opponent and he's struggling or she's struggling and she's almost down and she's almost out, but she gets back up, yay! And we're all cheering, yay, get up, get up, right? There are stories, there are, ta not tales, there are accounts in, in the Bible that also talk about women who live with courage. Esther, we've been talking about Esther. And there are some keys about living with courage that we need to adopt, not only from Esther, most people, regardless of your background, know about the story of David and Goliath. And we root for David because he's the little guy. And we want him to kill Goliath, the big guy. Even in America, in our, in our American society, we often root for the underdog, all right? Because we love to see people who have courage. It's good to see it, but what about you, okay? Being in the seat, in the face of adversity, feeling like you are ill-equipped, weak, and should not be here, that is a whole different ballgame. And that's what we're going to talk about today. It's fine to see Wonder Woman, one of my heroes, Black Panther, um, uh, what is it? Uh, Remember the Titans? Love that movie. Many of those movies talk about rising to the occasion in spite of diverse, uh, adversity, but living it is a whole different thing. So let's look at each element of this definition and a key. And I'm going to go through this and then we're going to swing back around because I want to hear from you, but I do want to share this with you. So number one, to move forward. All right. Courage requires a decision and it requires A-C-T-I-O-N, action. I used to be a cheerleader a million years ago. <laughs> it requires action. All right. And in order to make a decision and then act on it, you first have to think about it. You have to decide. And that thinking is part of your self-talk. It is part of your uh, cognition, if you will. Thoughts usually precede action and emotions influence our thoughts. So as a courageous woman, you have got to decide to be courageous and then act on it because courage is an action verb, okay? You can't have courage without moving forward, without doing something, all right? You're not, if you're a couch potato, we can't tell if you have courage or not. The only way to tell that you have courage is that we see your behavior in the face of adversity and that you have overcome or you have tried to overcome a certain situation. So key number one, courage requires a decision to keep moving forward. And then it requires the action to do the things that are needed that are in front of you. There are many people who believe that Education is the key to success. I disagree. Education is not the key to success. It's the use of education. It's the application of that education. You, you know, you probably know people in your family or, or friends who are eternal students, <laughs> which is fine. We are all lifelong learners, but if you if you're an eternal student and never apply what you've learned, it doesn't matter. So you've got to have not only the decision, but the action to demonstrate courage. 
because it's in the action that you then enlist your courage. That's when you use it, okay? But I think you have to decide ahead of time. Let me stop there and just pause for a minute. Let it, let it sink in because I hope that you make the decision today to become a woman of more courage, to become a more fearless woman. And it does require action. And we have plenty of opportunity because in this COVID-19 pandemic environment, and they're talking about opening up the country and opening up certain states, there is a lot of anxiety and fear going around. So this is an opportunity for you to be safe, but to use your courage to talk to yourself and say some self encouraging and self motivating thoughts versus fearful thoughts. All right. Number two, one step at a time. One step at a time. We are in a fast paced society. We like to leapfrog over things. We like to get from A to Z. Joyce Meyer says, everybody loves the beginning. Rah, yay, go. And everybody loves the end. Yay, you finish. But most people fall off in the middle. Mm. They stop because they get tired. They get weary. They get discouraged. <clears throat> understandably but in order to get to your destination you've got to move forward one step at a time there is no shortcut to success it is a daily consistent activity and this was really brought home to me by reading a book a friend of mine suggested the slight edge I highly recommend it and he talks about something you already know, but may have forgotten, or it might have gone by the wayside, which is consistency is king. But you have to be doing the right behaviors, but you have to be doing them consistently. Excuse me, if you think of an athlete, the athletes that look at those micro skills, like taking a jump shot or taking a layup or, um, those other kinds of shots, they practice those micro skills consistently. Certainly you have to have natural talent, but experience and ability over time trump talent. And if you have both, then you're a real powerhouse. But courage requires consistency because courage builds on itself. I remember when I was a little girl, uh, I was walking to school uh, with a friend of mine and a bully came by. He was a high school kid. I thought he was a giant. I was probably in fourth grade. And he came by and he started taunting me and pushing me. And it was a very traumatic experience for a little girl. And I went home and I just was so terrified, so terrified. But over time, I began to muster courage and talk to myself. And now, a hundred years later, <laughs> I'm not going to brag, but I will say that the Lord has taught me how to be courageous and it is a journey, but you have to build on your successes, which is as a sidebar, some advice is to make sure that you journal or document the times where you have been courageous. If you're after becoming a fearless woman and you want to take the bulls by the horn, bull by the horn and you want to be a woman of strong courage and that is a never ending journey okay because you can always get stronger you have to look at the times when you have used courage courage because that will help you remember that you are a woman of courage but it is one step at a time Hey, see, we have a question out there. Okay. How do you conjure up courage when your inner voice is screaming at you about what you think you, what, that, what you are thinking won't work? Okay. 
How do you manage that inner voice? And can you practice being courageous? It's a whole lot of questions in one. Can you become more courageous with practice? But first talk about that inner voice. How do we control that inner voice that keeps yelling, you can't do it, you can't do it. And it is screaming louder than that courage is. Hey, girlfriend, I understand. I understand, I understand. So I want to say a couple of things, and I love when Wanda Boo said uh, Q and T, questions and thoughts, because I'm going to give you some thoughts. Um, I don't have all the answers, but I have some answers, and I certainly have a lot of thoughts. And the way to do that, number one, you got to get your self-talk under your control. And there are many, many ways to do that. And I, there, I don't have time in today's workshop to address that, but I would love to in a future workshop because it is possible, barring a mental health, uh, significant mental health disorder or any kind of cognitive issue, it is possible to bring your thoughts under your will. So if you are confident in this direction, you believe it's the right direction, as a woman of faith, I'm living right, okay? I'm just talking about me. I'm living right. I'm, um, my prayer life is strong. I talk to God. I hear him. The Holy Spirit guides me. That is foundational for me. When that voice starts to scream, I have to say to it, this is the direction that I've been given. Because see, I stand on being anointed and appointed. And I believe that I am anointed and appointed for such a time as this to be doing what I'm doing. If you can say, I am anointed and appointed to be doing what is in front of me or what I need to be doing, maybe you're not doing it yet, but you're moving in that direction. That's why you're here today. There will come a time when you have to decide whose voice are you going to believe? And it is scary to rely on a God that you can't see. But I use my faith during those times when I hear that voice to say, I know what I've been told, what direction I've been given. I believe that I'm anointed, appointed, and chosen. And so I trust that the direction that I have been given is the right direction. But there is no getting out of that screaming voice when you're in that situation. So you have to look at it. You have to look at your fear. Fear has a way, now fear, some fear can be good because it keeps us in line. It keeps us from doing dangerous things that we probably shouldn't be doing. But there's another kind of fear whose intent is to be an obstacle and to keep you from your purpose, to keep you from progressing, to keep you stuck. That is a strategy to keep you stuck. And you can stay stuck in busyness, in bitterness, in resentment, in fear. If that's the situation, the only way to get through it is to look at that fear and say, in spite of how I feel, you see, that's the definition. In spite of how I feel, this is the right way to go. And then the other part of that is what Esther said. If I perish, I perish. You see, in my story, I have come to that line in the sand where no matter what, I'm going to do what I believe I'm supposed to do and what's in front of me and I'm that's just where I am in my life so that resolve that resoluteness and to quiet the screaming voice what's the worst that can happen well the worst that can happen is I could go bankrupt I could lose my job I could lose this relationship and then what then what would you do if that happened what would you do well, I'd have to figure out how to keep going. Exactly. And what would you do? Then what would you do? Well, I'd have to get another job or 
I'd have to file for bankruptcy. You know, you take it to its natural conclusion because you have to look at it. And then you have to say, okay, if, if I perish, I perish. But yeah, I don't want to perish. But you know what? If God is telling me to do this, then I need to follow my orders. And the worst that can happen is X, Y, Z. What would I do in that situation? And you know what? There has been a time in my life where I felt like I was going to shatter like glass on the floor. That I was going to melt into a puddle because it was too hard. That I could not go on. And guess what happened? I woke up the next day. <laughs> I did not melt into a puddle, nor have I yet broken into a bunch of shards of glass. I have felt like that, but it has not happened. So that's a long explanation to a worthy question of how do I stop that screaming voice? But the use of courage is in the midst of that screaming voice. Now I just said a whole lot of stuff, so I'm gonna pause, let it sink in and see if there are any comments or questions. Hey. Um, so um, we had um, some, just some comments. Yes, we are anointed and appointed. Um, someone says that they are so glad they, need, they um, got a chance to hear this. They needed to hear this. Feeling stuck in their business right now. Uh, we put the name of that book out there. So in, in case anybody needs to um, check out that book. But there's no other questions right now. But if you have any, definitely put them in the chat box. Somebody says, this is awesome. So keep going. <laughs> OK, I'll keep going. Um, and I'm glad that you're liking it. I, I'm, I'm glad about that. OK, so one step at a time in the face of adversity. So we just talked about that. You, courage is built in adversity. There is no other way. And when you rise to the occasion, when you, in spite of the screaming voice and the fear, take a big gulp, take some deep breaths, listen, listen to some calming music and write down, I have decided to keep going no matter what. And rehearsing that and then moving forward. Now, in the face of adversity could mean a lot of things. It could be a physical person. It could be a situation. Many people are facing financial ruin. I have been in that seat where it wasn't, of course, it wasn't COVID, but um, probably 12 years ago, self-employed, so I know about hunting and eating because in, if you're self-employed, if you don't hunt, you don't eat. And, or another way of looking at it is if you don't, if you don't fish, you're not going to catch anything. But I like the hunting analogy from Dave Ramsey because it's very focused. You got to get out there every day, like a lion, like a beast and get after it or else you will not bring a catch home. So, you have got to have that kind of focus, but understand nobody ever promised us a rose garden. That's a song. Life is hard and there are periods in our life where we are tested. There are periods in our life where we are um, stressed and this may be one for you. But I love this quote by Dr. Tony Evans, and it gives me great comfort. And he says, either you're in a storm, coming out of a storm, or going into a storm. Now, some people may feel that that's pessimistic, but I like it because when I'm in the storm, and it's not if, it's when, and if you're in a storm right now, take <coughs> comfort that storms don't last. Storms don't last. So eventually you will come out of the storm. 
But when you come out of the storm, be happy and you will come out. It might look very different than what you imagine, but you will survive. I hope you will survive. I hope you will stay strong. I hope you will muster your courage and figure out how can I bob and weave, adapt and adjust to this new normal so that I can survive and then thrive. Um, but when you come out of the storm, be grateful, be thankful, and enjoy it. Because guess what's coming? Another storm. So the quote helps me to remember that when I'm in a time of calm, to appreciate it. And when I'm in a time of storm, to remind myself that storms don't last and that I will get through it because I have gotten through it. If you've gotten through a storm before, you will get through this one. And another thing that can help you is reflecting on the worst storm in your, pos in your life. Now, this is not the worst storm in my life. I'm not actually going through a storm right now. Uh, but the last storm I had, I had to remind myself, this is nothing compared to 1992. So hopefully this is not the worst storm that you've experienced, but if it is, know and have the faith and the courage that you will get through it and you will have a story. You will have a story to tell. And that story is what's going to help somebody else. Because I also believe that that is part of our individual ministry is to make it through the storm so we can reach back and help somebody else. That is so true, Dacia, because, you know, I, what I do is I journal a lot mm -hmm. and everything that I'm going through, I journal. And so typically I will go back and look at a year or a year before and look at the things that I was going through then and, and see where, where, God, where God brought me from or what God brought me through. And I'm going, oh, that's a piece of cake compared to um, what I'm going through now. Or I, that strengthens my faith yeah. because it helps me to understand that if I came through that, then God's going to bring me through this. So it's such a great idea to go back and look at your worst storms or where you've been. Absolutely. Absolutely. Also, can I add to that, Janice? You make a great point. Um, I journal as well. And what I find is, when I look back and I remember like, like those storms were a really big deal at the time, it helps me put into perspective that the storm I'm feeling today might not be such a big deal, exactly. right? But it feels like it, like in the middle of it, it feels like it. But if I can say, you know, I think maybe 10 days from now or 10 weeks from now, I'm gonna look back at this and it's not gonna be a big deal. It calms me in the middle of the storm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Any other comments or, or uh, in the chat box? Be sure to put your comments in the chat box. We want to hear from you. Uh, we um, definitely want to make this a conversation. Um, I do have a few more points, but we can pause here for any questions or comments or thoughts. Questions and thoughts. Now, someone says, yes, what God brought me through in line with uh, what we were talking about. I don't have, we got lots of hearts. <laughs> And if anybody has anything they want to say, let us know. Okay, so let's motor on. So there are elements of courage that you can work on if you are not going through a storm. And I'll talk about those uh, probably in another session. Right now, uh, the Lord has me working on grit. That is my uh, assignment in front of me is grit. Uh, keep going, keep going, keep going. And, and part of the situation that I'm in does require courage, but grit is the more prevalent um, value that I'm, that I'm working on. So uh, mustering courage in the face of adversity can take all of your strength. If you are not going through a storm right now, then I encourage you to get books and to get other um, resources that help you learn about courage because 
before you need it is the time when it is important to uh, land on your beliefs about it and maybe even come up with some self-coping statements. Um, everything's going to be fine. I'm strong. Um, I'm anointed, appointed, called. You know, all of those things you are important for you to remind yourself of before the storm because that's when, because when the storm hits, that's when you use it and you have to, to, to muster it and it has to be easily accessible. And it's not easily accessible unless you prepare in advance. Does that make sense? So if you're not going through a storm, now is the time to start learning more about courage and about perseverance and about grit, about boldness, uh, about strength. And to one, uh, now this is kind of getting off topic, but at some point, we've got to talk about your self-talk. Your self-talk has got to be more optimistic than pessimistic. And we could do a whole series on self-talk. You know, that's getting into the counseling area. And I can't counsel you from, from Zoom, uh, at least not in a group. But I can give you some thoughts about your self-talk. And, and one thought is, would you say out loud to your best friend, some of the things that you say to yourself when you are facing a challenge. There's, um, there's a question out there. What does grit mean? Woo! Now see, that gets me jazzed because I, that is where I am. Grit is that internal fortitude. Uh, Angela Duckworth is the prevalent and current expert on grit. Uh, she's done a TED talk and she has a book out called Grit, G-R-I-T. I have many of her, um, well, I have her grit scale. Grit is just that internal fortitude of not bulldog, not letting go. Now, it doesn't mean not letting go all the time. Because there are times when you need to say, you know what, this isn't for me, or I put all my effort in and it's not working. I mean, there are times to recognize when something is not working. Um, so like the, the book of, um, I think it's Ecclesiastes, there's a time to sow and there's a time to reap. Well, there's a time to persevere and then there's a time to let go. Uh, and that requires lots of wisdom and lots of different um, elements to it. But grit is that internal fortitude of not giving up. If you're on the right track and you're trying to figure something out and you believe that this is the right direction and you're getting messages that this is the right direction, uh, the messages I consider to be signposts, like when you're driving on a long uh, drive and you have signposts that let you know you're going in the right direction. If you have all of those, then the lesson might be to persevere in spite of the difficulty that is in front of you. So that's what grit is. Um, you see, I actually read that book and, uh, and where they came up with the term from is she actually looked at some recruits. I think that were um, going into the Marine Corps. I think that's what it was. Uh -huh. and they looked to, they found this characteristic in those that made it through boot camp and made it through. And they entitled it grit, that, that, that ability to have that passion to keep going despite what you were going through. Because we know, according to um, what we understand, and I have a son who's in the Marines, that they have a, a extremely difficult boot camp period and a lot of times people will give up and so what they found is the people who had this characteristic called grit were most likely the ones that would make it through so when we think about that in our own lives do we have what it takes to make it through COVID-19 do we have what it takes to make it through the difficulties in life so it's a great book if, if you definitely want to look at that Good point. Yeah, yeah, I believe they were looking at, uh, because the assumption is that your intelligence um, will get you through, but they found it wasn't intelligence or test scores or entrance scores. It was that quality of grit. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you for sharing that. We got to do something on grit. There you go. There's a couple questions. 
Um, uh, is death considered a storm if it keeps happening all around you? Mm. I don't, uh, it depends. Uh, death as in dying, death, is death considered a storm? Well, death is certainly ha experiencing the grief and loss that comes from losing pe multiple people around you. You know, I, 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 I think it depends because uh, it, it depends on a lot of things. So I would certainly say that you, if you're experiencing a lot of grief and loss, that can be considered a storm. Yeah. Um, especially if it's multiple. Yeah. So I invite you to consider calling us a gateway of hope because if you find yourself experiencing multiple deaths, that can be uh, trauma inducing. That could leave a really deep wound in your spirit and in your mind and in your heart. And we are happy. We are here to help you uh, navigate through that. You might need a little bit of help through that. You know, when we get a deep cut or gash, we go to the hospital and they sew up, you know, they clean it and then they stitch it. Because if you didn't go to the hospital, if you didn't get it attend, attended to, it would not heal well and it might get infected. So consider those multiple deaths or any significant death, a, a, a wound, a deep wound. And um, yes, we invite you to contact Gateway of Hope and, and see if we can help you navigate that. But yes, I could see how that would be a very, uh, that I don't know if that'd be a storm, that'd be like a typhoon or hurricane. Exactly. There's yeah. one more question. Can you unintentionally learn to live in the storm if it seems like it never ends? Mm, wow. I think so. I think you can begin to not get used to, but learn how to cope and survive. Uh, if you are surrounded by a lot of chaos and a lot of just upheaval. We have sisters, you know, when I feel sorry for myself, I think of my sisters who live in Afghanistan and my, I'm talking about my, just my spiritual sisters. I don't have biological sisters, but we do, you know, we're all connected. Uh, so I'm talking from that vernacular, but I think of the sister, our sisters who live in uh, refugee camps who have no hope of, they have no control over their lives, uh, or they're in the war zone. They're in war zones, bombs dropping daily. And uh, I think of my ancestors who have come through slavery. So it is possible to endure great hardship and come out strong. That is possible because women have done it. We are all women. The women's suffrage, suffrage movement, civil rights movement, we can name them, name them, name them. It is not unusual for women to experience great tragedy and difficulty. Uh, and so if you are going through that, we invite you to connect with us at Gateway of Hope to help you navigate it. But there are situations where women are just in, it's just a very difficult situation and there's, you know, not a lot of um, easy answers. So, yeah, you can make it though, because other women have, so it's possible. You're stronger than you know, you're stronger than you know and nobody can control your thinking but you. You can control your thinking. There's a book called Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. And he wrote about the Nazi prison camp experience while he was going through it. And he eventually developed a form or a framework of uh, therapy. And what he discovered in his experience was that the people in the Nazi prison camps who held on to hope survived because nobody can take that from you in spite of your external experiences. So it is possible to change your perspective 
even with a lot of death and dying or chaos around you because other people have done it and you are as strong as they are. We talked about, uh, Denise mentioned hope matters. Hope is healing. Yes. We got to have a, a workshop on hope. <laughs> I'm writing all these topics down. <laughs> uh, okay. So let me continue on. And then we are, are how are we doing on time? Okay. Okay. Because I do want to get a, a, a little bit more uh, discussion going if we are able to. So we've talked about this. Courage is moving forward in spite of how you feel or it's the it's the uh, moving forward one step at a time in the face of adversity and in fight in spite of how you feel the key number four is courage requires your will over your emotions now short of a an emotional mental illness issue or some other kind of biological or chemical issue for the most part, we can bring our thoughts under our will. That is possible. It takes practice, um, but it, I do it every day. And so do you, quite frankly. If you've ever had the experience of getting up for work, this pre-COVID, getting up for work, not feeling like going, but you get up anyway, that is an example that you have the ability to have your will trump your feelings. Feelings are not facts. Feelings give you information. But just because you might feel like a failure does not make you a failure. Just because you feel like a mess does not make you a mess. Just because you feel like you're worthless and wrong and incompetent or insecure does not make it so. It's a feeling. And so understanding that this feeling does not mean that's who I am. And that in spite of this feeling, I decide to keep moving forward. That is an element of courage. There's a Japanese proverb, fall down seven times, get back up eight, okay? This speaks to resilience because just because you have courage doesn't mean you're always going to win. You are going to fall sometimes. Failure is necessary for learning. This is in my room on on my wall by the door so that every entrance and exit from my bedroom, I see this sign. Failure is necessary for learning because I used to believe that if I failed at something that I was stupid or just not competent or it, you just had that small feeling, you know, you feel that small. But if you take the approach that failure really can help you learn how to be better, that puts a whole different perspective on failure for me. And I think it will for you as well. So living with courage does not equal being perfect. Living with courage does not equal always being right. Living with courage equals effort, skill, action, and getting back up because you are not, not going to win every fight. But you know what? If you get up, you can fight another day. You can be fierce and you can keep going. So it takes courage to keep going in spite of feeling less than, in spite of feeling like, um, boy, I just messed up. I just said the wrong thing. I did the wrong thing. I made the wrong decision. Oh my gosh. But you have to talk to yourself and say, you know what? Failure is necessary for learning. If I'm wrong, I admit it. 
but I'm going to keep going. Don't, don't stop. What did this say? Fall down seven, get back up eight. A few years ago, we, there was a really popular song in the gospel uh, world, Donnie McClurkin. We fall down, we get up. We fall down, we get up. We fall down, we get up. A saint is just a sinner who falls down and gets back up. Y'all know I can't sing, but I do try. I make a joyful noise. <laughs> hey, see, I sing. <laughs> Sounded good. <laughs> we have a question now, whenever you're ready for questions. <laughs> okay, so just a Okay, just a couple more slides. Love, love, love this slide. This is on. This is my screensaver. That's my lion. That's my inner Dacia. Yes. Now she doesn't always show up, but I do have her on my screensaver to remind me. You know, when I think, I, first of all, I love cats and I love big cats uh, to watch them. Did not watch the Tiger King. No. Um, because I love animals, and so that's a whole nother story. But if you think about a tiger, lion or tiger, bear, they're not afraid. They have courage. Now, of course, they're, they're working on instinct, but they don't have a lot of, oh, you know, self-doubts. They have a focus. Focus. You, you probably seen some of those nature programs where the lion sees the gazelle. Mm. It's all over for the gazelle. That's the kind of focus that I am suggesting that you enlist in whatever is in front of you that will help you to live with courage. Find a screensaver and things that help you to enlist your courage. Courage doesn't mean that you don't get afraid. Courage means that you don't let fear stop you. Courage means that you don't let fear stop you. So in conclusion, we would love to connect with you at Gateway of Hope. We have teletherapy, video therapy, we have support groups, we have a mission to strengthen women. That is why we're doing this beta test of Well Women Wednesday, because we have the ability to help women even now. And this is a great time for you to consider how to strengthen yourself and have a coach come alongside you or have a counselor come alongside you to help you move forward. So check out our website, gwhope.org. We would love for you to connect with us in other ways. Your time, when things open back up, we're gonna need volunteers. Tell other people about Gateway of Hope. We need to connect with other business leaders, other churches. Uh, we're developing a, um, a mental health um, uh, program for church leaders. And certainly in this time, we could use your financial support because we have lights, water, and gas, just like a, a business, uh, but we rely on your financial help. So you can go to our website, gwhope.org, and click on the donation page. Just in closing, before we open it up for questions and comments, remember, this is a journey, okay? You will have peaks, you will have mountaintop experiences, perhaps you are in a valley on walking. You will get through that valley, right? The Lord does not want you to stay in the valley. He wants you to keep going, learn what you need to learn, and um, become stronger. So let's open it up for discussions, thoughts, and um, please use the chat box. So um, there was a question out there. She says it's been answered now, but but I, I'd like to definitely hear um, your thoughts on that. You know, a lot of times as leaders, when we are when we're dealing with things ourselves, and other people are looking to us for encouragement, how do we continue to to 
to stand in a leadership position even though we are frightened ourselves? And how do we keep going and keep encouraging others when on the inside, maybe we're not even sure what we're saying ourselves because we have that fear? Great question. And I look to my, uh, one of my mentors, uh, Dr. Um, George Westlake of Sheffield Family Life Center, my home church. Uh, I love his son. He's my pastor now, but I came up through the father, Dr. Westlake. And he would always just enlist this courageous spirit of even if, even when, I mean, you've got to have that hope as a leader. You have got to have that private time as a leader where you pour out your, your heart to your higher power, uh, to your God. My God is the Lord Jesus. And um, let him know how you feel. But if you are a leader, people are looking to you for courage. And so courage, remember the definition, in spite of how you feel, you have, you, I think it's important to say, you know what, I have struggled. I understand the anxiety, but we are going to keep going. And then you've got to bring it around. I think you've, you, it's important to be genuine and authentic. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it's wise to get into a lot of your own personal struggle. I don't think that is the audience to share that with. That's why it's important to have mentors and girlfriends outside of work and maybe coaches, because those are the people that you can vent to. But the people who are your direct reports who are looking to you for leadership, you have to display. I think it's important for you to display the courage and the hope that is within you. So. So I, don't, I hope I'm being articulate enough, but Dr. Westlake would often talk about his struggle, which is why it's important to document former struggles because that gives you courage that God has helped you in the past. He's faithful, he will help you again. He, he does not leave us. He does not leave us nor forsake us. So we have to hold on to our faith, those of us who have that kind of faith and speak it. The word says to speak life. So I think we, we, that's what we have to do because people are looking for hope. And when we speak that life in truth, I think that is um, helpful. That is more helpful than speaking gloom and doom. We don't, we don't want to speak death. We want to speak life. And um, Denise mentioned a sisterhood helps. When we talk about, you know, what I had talked about in uh, the symposium, life-saving friends, especially when we're having those hard times. And if you look at the life of Esther herself, when she needed some, some help, to, to prepare herself for what she was about to do. She enlisted the, um, the help of everyone to pray and fast with her to um, prepare for what she was about to face. Absolutely, life-saving friendships. There was so much good information in that workshop, Janice, and it reminds us to nurture our and feed our friendships. And this is the great time to do that. Yeah, we got to have girlfriends. We have girlfriends in different areas. I think you said seven different areas in that workshop. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, say um, that some look to older saints for encouragement. Mm -hmm. uh, then I use that and encourage younger ones. Have a sister circle that I reach out to. Lots of comments about um, that this is a blessing. Um, that um, I appreciate all you do in the sisterhood. Um, let's see. Uh, I think that is it there. But this has been a blessing. It's speaking life into people. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. I uh, hope you can join us next week, April 29th. It's the same Zoom code. Tell a friend. We're going to do two weeks talking about distractions, disappointments, and discouragement because those are things that get that trip us up. They're like the potholes, emotional potholes and detour. Um, detour. So be sure to put that on your calendar. Uh, and then I want to invite you, um, if you have something that you want to say, um, you know, we, we want to respect your anonymity. We want to respect your confidentiality. But if you want to be part of a conversation and you have something that you want to say, please put that in the chat box so that Janice uh, can, can let me know that. And um, 
Oh, you need the Zoom code. You missed it. I'm so sorry. We're, we're gonna, I don't know what the issue is with Zoom. Um, I'm sorry you missed it. We just, we just need this. Looks like it just, we need to just send out that invite again that has the code in it. Cause like I yeah. said, that one sends us somewhere else and okay. then it's are full. So we can work on that for next time. Yeah. My apologies. So let us know if you want to say something. Otherwise we'll continue to read your comments in the chat box. I want to respect your time. It's one o'clock. We will always uh, begin on time. Well, we'll begin a few minutes after and end on time, but we, we can stay here for a few more minutes if there are other questions or if, if some of you want to stay on and you have a question or a comment, I uh, would love to hear from you. And you will be getting a survey after this. As I mentioned, this is a beta test. We're testing this uh, curriculum. Uh, that's one reason that uh, we're putting it out there. We feel it will be helpful to you. So please be sure to fill out the survey, complete the survey uh, when you get it later today. Hi, this is Delisa. I too had trouble uh, with the code and everything. So what I did is I had registered for this one. And so then I went and re-registered for next week's. And then I got the code to come back. And so I just used that code. Okay. And pass it on. So yeah, pass that on. So next week's yes. code is working for whatever reason. Yes. <laughs> I, I cannot explain it. <laughs> but I'm glad that you made it. And the Zoom code, Janice just posted the Zoom code to so be sure to document that somewhere, maybe in your phone. Write it down so you can have it for next week. All right. That's it. it. Wrote it down. This is Tammy. <laughs> Sorry, my, my video doesn't work, but I see everyone that's on there. So great. Any other questions or anybody want to ask anything or any comments? I think this was a great session. Thanks for coming out and invite somebody next week. All right, ladies. Well, remember to live with courage. Memorize that definition. Put it up on your wall uh, because it will help you. It will help you to keep moving forward and to practice um, being courageous. And next week, we will pick up the discussion. So I guess um, that's it for today. What's the topic, What's the topic for next week? Ta next week, we're going to be talking about living with courage, overcoming disappointments, distractions, and, um, oh, hold on. <laughs> disappointments, distractions, and um, there's one more D. Discouragement. How could I forget that one? <laughs> Distraction, disappointment, and discouragement. Yeah. So, okay, ladies. Well, I'm going to go ahead and end the meeting. I look forward to seeing you next week. Give us a call at Gateway of Hope if we can be of help to you. Uh, and um, have a great week. See you, see you next week. Bye-bye. Thanks, Janice. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, everybody.